Just going to quickly do an inspection. Guess it's been. I have never been so busy. I've taken um, thirteen. Is it thirteen or thirteen TVs in this morning for repair, ranging from Vestels from ten years old up to a two years old sixty-five inch Hisense, and and this one, which I'm sure they said was a forty-two inch Samsung, but it's no forty-two inch governor. Just switch some more lights on. And I'll zoom in, because I haven't seen the model number yet. Oh, does that say MU? Yeah, 6120. This looks like a backlit MU, though. Um, I can't remember if this was a smart one or not. But apparently it's not working. Now, the curved MUs were a nightmare, because they got edge-lit issues. So the first thing I need to do is um, take the stand off. Be nice if this was a power supply issue or a main board, not backlights, but I think I'm hoping for too much there. Let's turn it around and plug it in. Now about here is where the standby light should be. You can see a little light, but that's the standby light of the TV behind. So I'm just going to switch this on. Uh, it'd be nice if we didn't see a standby light, meaning it's a power supply error. Have we got another standby light on? I don't think we have. I don't think we have. Yes, we have. I can see it glowing. Yeah, that's the standby light just gone out. I think this is constantly rebooting. Don't tell me this is one of the early screen problems. Yeah, the standby light is still going and that is flashing. And that's not really backlight. I mean, it can be. It can be a backlight issue, but oh, it also could be a screen issue. Hmm. Won't know until we take the back off. Is that standby light still doing something? Yeah. Okay. Well, it could be a cough issue. It could be a... Um, it could be a clock issue. Could be a backlight issue. Could be a power... Hey. It's a sham shang. It could be everything. At the moment, that's looking like a screen issue, though, isn't it? I didn't think the screen issues happened with the MUs. Well, maybe that's where it all started, folks. Um, I don't recall having this model in before, so I'm not too sure. Let's get the back off. Incidentally, as you may be aware, um, I repaired this Sony TV here um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the picture quality on it is really stunning. I'm only using it for a monitor. It's not something I can sell on. But um, the picture quality compared to the Samsung there and the Samsung that I use over here. Um, well, the picture quality on this Sony is rather amazing compared to, you know, that one there, that one here, and that one there. I mean, all these TVs I've repaired for myself, botched together so I can use them as monitors, but very impressed with the Sony. Anyway, let's take this off. I think this is going to be what we know it's going to be, if that makes sense. really is looking like um, it's a clock lines error, it's a screen fault. Take one side out and see what happens. Do the backlights come on and stay on this time? Yes. 
Have you noticed? But no picture. We know what this means, don't we? Why am I fiddling about down here when I should be taking him out there? Twit. Same again, backlights on. La -de -da -de -da -de -da. So we've got a screenshot somewhere, and of course I've got no way of knowing which side it is. So I'm going to have to play for a bit. Okay, well I've blocked off the right hand side, but it's now given a picture to the left hand side. Maybe I'm getting close, but I doubt it. Oh, that doesn't look good, does it? No, three quarters of a picture back, and I have to confess that it doesn't get any better. I keep trying for another half an hour. Um, I block off the coughs, and I um, sort out all where the shorts could be on the clock lines, but um, it doesn't get any better than that picture you've just seen. Um, so I'm calling it a day on this one. I tried my best. I've got a little bit of it back, but uh, sadly... Uh, that picture is not going to come back. It's a screen issue. And any time you do manage to get a picture back, and um, even if you get a full picture back, sometimes um, it fails again within a week. So um, you do your best. You give it half an hour, 45 minutes, and if it, if it doesn't work, you leave it alone. And uh, this MU, I think, was the start of the screen problems from Samsung. Start of the ties and screen issues, who are now bankrupt, of course, because of all the... Um, Panels that have failed over the last five, six, seven years. Terrible. Um, but the customer that brought me this also brought me something else. And I'll just show you once again. Um, the best I can get is that. Uh, well, in fact, I think that's a bit worse than last time. Time to give up and move on. Um, so not a repair for the customer, but we have something else. And I'm a little bit more hopeful with the other thing that the customer's brought me. Now, the same people that, um, or the same person, I should say, that brought me that Samsung also brought this, which is completely different. Um, I, he was talking to me on the phone. And I said, what's the make of it? He said, HD ready. <laughs> I thought that'll do. Um, and I've just noticed, just by looking at it from the front... You can't actually tell what make it is. Does it say there? No. So, I kind of understood why he said it was made by HD Ready. Because it's HD Ready. But actually, the brand may surprise you. It's branded under Matsui. There you go. But of course, I'm sure, as you recognise from that label, it is actually a um, Vestel. And this TV's been working for a long, long time. I didn't quite get the date on the back. I'm sure you did. Um, he loaned it out to a friend. The friend gave it him back a month later. Not working. So um, it's just a Vestel 32-inch chassis. Problem was capacitors on these. Usually the twenty seven hundred, but I don't. You know, we'll we'll plug it in, and see what it's doing or not doing. I've still got the stand on it at the moment, so it has. It's at a funny angle, but let me switch it on, and we'll see if we get any lights. Yeah, we get a blue light that flashes. Yeah. Isn't that what used to happen with the Vestels? With the bad power supply?
Mhm. Just in case anybody is thinking, and of course, I can understand people do think, why on earth are you working on one of these old TVs? Certain people still like old TVs. They like the TVs they've had for years. It fits in the corner of their living room. It goes with their decor. Or it may have some sort of personal emotional connection connected to a family member that's no longer with us. From a business point of view, this TV is no different than a 32-inch brand new Samsung that's gone faulty. Not brand new, obviously, but let's say a year or two old. Um, my pricing structure is still the same. They pay for the labor and they pay for the parts. In fact, I have found of late, and you've probably noticed how many older videos I've been doing, or videos on older TVs, plasmas and old LCDs. Um, I get more money for working on those than I do for working on new ones. And of course, the other thing to bear in mind is I get a better result because they do get repaired. This is only going to be capacitors. It'll probably go on to work for years. Uh, whereas if I stick backlights into, um, I don't know, an LG, Samsung, Vestel set, there's no guarantee that that's going to continue working for, you know, 18 months, two years, uh, or something else could go wrong. But these are always sturdy machines. So I'm happy to repair these. And I get, as I say, I get the same money. Um, sometimes a little bit more because parts are harder to come by, so they, they have to pay a bit extra for the parts. Anyway, let's take the back of this and um, see if there's a bulging cap. Maybe a mainboard problem, maybe something else. It may not be repairable, which looks bad on me because he's given me two TVs and the first Samsung is not repairable, so I'd like to get this one going. And I'm sure you can see it. If you remember the LCDs that we did, we did a couple of 42-inch Vestel LCDs, and it's always the cap on the 5-volt rail, which is a 16-volt 2700. It may be a 22 on this power supply, but I think it's still going to be a 2700. The rest of them all seem to be okay. I think we'll... I'll just get the mobile camera and just span around and... Um, have a closer look and see. I think it's just that one, don't you? I'll take the board out in a second. I just want to test. I was going to say, I want to test the voltage on that cap, but I... No points to test it, so I will take it out and then test it. The other thing to notice about this TV, very similar to the um, plasma we did a couple of days ago, is that this is in mint condition. I mean, it's, it's a 2009 TV, so this is 15 years old, and... Yet it looks like it came out of the factory yesterday. Even the power supply. And these things usually get caked in dust. How they're not, I don't know. Some people just live in dust-free conditions. I don't know how that's possible. So there's only a little voltage in the main cap. That's only going to tickle me, so I can continue to take this capacitor out. And an even better one going in. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but it's worth mentioning. Um, these caps are on the 5 volt rail, which is a standby rail, which means the TV and these caps are in use probably 24 hours a day, uh, year on, year out. So um, they get plenty of abuse. And that's why this cap is always failing, uh, unless you unplug the TV at night. But if most people leave it in standby, then this capacitor is still being used. 
and gets used. Well, this one's been used for, what is it, 10 years now? No, longer than that. This is a 2009 TV, isn't it? So it's um, it, this cap is 14 years old. So let's put a new one in. And polarity is always important. Got to get it in the right way. So I'll just show you here that you can see uh, the stripe, which is the negative side, uh, matches up with that little dot. OK, we'll plug it in, see if the lights stop flashing and see if something appears on the screen. I'll, I'll turn some lights off, obviously. Well, it stopped flashing. Oh, it did stop flashing. No, it's gone out. Oh, I think the screen's coming on. Yay. Every Vestel TV I've had recently, which has been an old one, works on this new remote. So hang on. Volume. Yeah, it does. Settings. Look at that for old software. Reminds me of the um, early digi boxes of 2010. Well, it, it's 2009 software, isn't it? But anyway, TV is now up and running. Um, I can give it a snooker test if you insist. Just wanted to check that the standby light does actually go to standby. And when you turn it on, 
it comes on. Yes. And standby. Yes. I didn't just notice that the TV's only got one HDMI, but as we said, it was 2009. Again, I know it doesn't come through over the camera, but actually this is an amazing picture. And as I said before, the TV's in mint condition. That is a really good HD picture. I mean, I can't watch standard definition pictures in this day and age, unless it's an old program from the 70s or 80s that I really want to see again. Um, but the HD picture on this is as good, if not better than most HD pictures you'll see anywhere else. That is just amazing. 32-inch, um, massive bezel, obviously, around the side, but that's... Listen, I, if I lived in a house that had this TV in the living room, I would stand it on the table proudly. There's nothing wrong with this TV at all. It's fine. As you can probably tell, I'm still not convinced by 4K. And I'm definitely not convinced by today's modern televisions. Bring me half a dozen of these a week. That'll pay my rent, pay my bills. You can get stuffed with your modern Samsungs and the screen problems, of which I had a 75-inch turn up today. Somebody turned up, didn't tell me they were turning up with a 75-inch. Samsung TU. Can't be fixed. Heartbreaking. But I've told them about the 2015 sales of Goods Act, and if they're going to act on it, uh, they should get some money back, some vouchers back. But millions of people are not. Nice working TV. At least we've got one working tonight. What time is it? Is it midnight? 21 minutes past midnight. I need my beauty sleep and lots of it. Good night.